Yes, sir, mister. You can always tell a first-rate town by the way the people treat a stranger. Now, you know we're first class around here because this is genuine bay rum I'm throwing in, absolutely free. I appreciate that word free, sir, because I'm down to my last dollar. Well, you got a nice way about you, mister. But if you want to make money around this town, your strong back will help you more than your good manners. Oh? The mines, they're running full blast around here, paying top dollar, too. The cattlemen, on the other hand, are suffering. What's good for one is bad for the other. Why, Ben Cartwright's been coming to town the past two days, trying to get men for the roundup. But they're all taking jobs in the mines. Guess you can't blame a man when you stack up the difference in wages. Ben sure is persistent, though. Which one is Little Joe? The one on the Pinto. Hey, how come you knew his name? I thought you said you was a stranger around here. Oh, everybody's heard about the Ponderosa, the Cartwrights. You heading for the mines? I always go where the real money is. You sure you want to sign on? Well, I'll tell you how it is, Mr. Ben. If I go to the mines, they're going to pay me too much money. Too much money? Well, what can a man do with money but spend it on Saturday nights for whiskey and women? Now, at my age, too much of both <laughs> ain't good for me. Now, with what you pay me, I can stay healthy. <laughs> you got yourself a job, Harry. An explanation like that deserves beer, Harry. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Harry. Oh, oh, oh. Here you need hands. That's right. Well, I'm looking for a job. Uh, we look for cow hands. I know. You don't mind me asking, have you ever pushed cattle before? Yeah, I've done it before, and, and like I say, I'm, I need a job. Well, if it's money you're needing, why haven't you tried the mines? You see, a man should only go below ground once when they plant them there in a pine box. Me, I, I like fresh air. Well, that sounds fair enough, Pa. Uh, where have you worked before, Mr. Uh, Stafford, Clay Stafford. Uh, you worked any ranches before? Uh, the Circle J and Lazy Bar up in Oregon Territory. Lazy Bar is one of the biggest ranches up there. Ever worked around here? Well, no, no local references, if that's what you mean. He's healthy and he needs a job, Pa. What more do you want? Uh, wages are $8 a week. Payday every Friday and a bonus at the end of the job. Sounds fair. All right. Clay Stafford. Right. Very good. We'll be leaving in about an hour. Doesn't look like anybody else in the lineup yet. I'll get some supplies. Inside. Right. Hey, thanks for putting in a good word with your father. It made any difference. You'd have gotten the job anyway. We need hands. Hey, where are you from, Stafford? Call me Clay. I'm from a lot of places. Now, a man only gets born in one. Well, that'd be New Orleans. Hey, no kidding. New Orleans? My mother was born there. That's a coincidence. Yeah, that. <laughs> You gotta work for a living. You might as well put in your time for the cart right. Well, this is downright luxury here. Solid floor in the bunkhouse, springs in the beds, not even any busted window panes. You ain't been doing much riding lately, huh? How do you mean? Well, hardly any calluses on your hands. Wear gloves. Well, I'll be work a plenty starting tomorrow. I think I'll go in and try out them springs right now. Pretty fancy holster you got there. Yeah, it's a McKendrick special. <laughs> it's like the left front end of it all. Well, you see, you don't draw the gun slips out. Oh, yeah. You'd be ready to fire that in the wink, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's, it's fast. You won't be needing anything that fast around here. Yeah. <laughs> 
too tired to eat. Yeah, but this is good, Mr. Bent. Yeah, that's not good. Well, I'll tell you, it's a day's work that last a week. Been so saddle sore since I was young. Well, I'm ready, Mr. Cartwright. All right. See you. Yeah. Where's he going? Back to the ranch. I'm gonna help little Joe bring out the supplies. How'd you talk him into that? After the day's work he put in. I didn't. He volunteered. Beaver for work, ain't he? We could use a couple more like him. Clay, what are you doing back here? Thought I'd give you a hand with supplies. Hey, thanks, I can use a hand as soon as I finish the coffee. Some place you got here. Yeah, sure is. My pa built this place with his bare hands. I was born in that little room upstairs. But you said you were from New Orleans. No, no, that's where my pa married my mother. They were married there, and then they came back here to settle down. You uh, remember your mother? No, not too much. Just what my pa told me about her. I always said she was like... Like having spring in the house the year round. Always laughing, full of fun and warmth. Guess she must have looked pretty nice, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I guess she was about the prettiest woman in New Orleans. Hey, I've got a, got a picture of her right here. Let me just carry it with me. What do you think? Like having spring in the house all year round? Prettiest picture I've ever seen. Sure wish this was mine. What? Oh, well, it was a silly thing for me to say. I, I was just thinking how I how I never knew my mother. Kind of wish she looked like this. Hey, we better head out. If we're gonna get back to camp before sundown, huh? I guess we better. Those supplies won't take care of themselves. enough to see your way clear to, to give me a two dollar advance on my next week's pay. Well, Harry, it's, uh, it's barely 11 o'clock. Have you run through your eight dollars already? Well, well it, it's this way, Mr. Ben. Now, they, these, these miners around here, they're drinking more whiskey and giving more to the girls. So I got to raise my sights to meet the competition. <coughs> well, Harry, what about that? What about your health that you're so worried about? It's Saturday night. I'll worry about my health Sunday morning. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're a lucky night, huh? Yeah, it sure is. You just come into town. Yeah, the first of the week. Where well, you been keeping yourself? Herding cattle? You're a cowpoke, huh? Yeah, that's right. 
I deal with it. Hey, Mel. We're wasting a lot of time with this little glass, can't you? Give me something a little bigger. Yeah. Full house. Four trays. You say you're a cow hand. Yeah, that's right. I've been working to Ponderosa. You say you're a cheat. We work in the mines hard for our money. But being under the ground don't hurt my eyes none. It's gonna be like you low carded. I see it's my lucky night. And I say we want our money back. Every man to his own opinion. you get miners and cattlemen together, they just itching for something to happen. And this thing was just about what they were waiting for. Joseph, the sheriff's right. It's best the boy leave town. Pa, it is not right and it's not fair. Now, we all know he shot in self-defense. Maybe so. But do you know whether or not he low-carded? Roy, a man is innocent until proven guilty. A stranger, a fast gun, and a card sharp all wrapped up in one package? Now, that's something Virginia City don't oh, need. Oh, wait a minute, Roy. Wait a minute. What do you mean, a stranger? Everybody's a stranger until they settle someplace. And as for being a fast gun, if he wasn't, he'd be dead instead of the miner. So don't use that. All right, I'll grant you that. But you ain't answering the main point. Was he cheating or wasn't? But the point is there is no proof the man was cheating. That is not the point. Little Joe, when I first took this job, and that was a few years ago, I made an arrangement of myself. I said, Roy, the best way to handle trouble is to avoid it. And it's worked out pretty well. Now, if this fellow Stafford stays around town, I'm just laying myself wide open to more killings. Can't you see that? Now, that's why he's got to go. No, I can't see it. It's not right, Roy, and it's not fair. Come on, Joseph. The sheriff knows best. It's his job. I'll take care of it, Roy. The young man will leave in the morning. Thanks, Ben. So long, little Joe. Well, uh, right is right, and this isn't. Now, Joseph, you're doing a lot of talking about right is right, and proof, and facts. Well, what facts do you have? What do you know about them? You worked a couple of ranches up in Oregon Territory? What else? But that isn't the main point. If he stays in Virginia City, he may be killed. Now, Roy's right. He knows best. Come on. Are you heading out? Yeah, I figured I'd have to move on sooner or later. Not quite this soon. I'm sorry to see you go. I put my time in here. Your father got his money's worth. Oh, I know that. Besides that, your father and the sheriff made it pretty clear that my welcome had run out. Yeah, I know. I still think they're wrong about that. I told him so last night. I mean, you stuck up for me? Argued against your father? Why not? What's right is right. Is that all? No, it's not all. I, I don't know. We got along pretty good. Kind of thought we could be friends. You remember that picture of your mother you showed me? Yeah. Can I see it again? What for? Just let me see it. See, this isn't just a picture of a beautiful woman. She's my mother, too. There's something I don't like about closed doors. Man's got a right to talk in private. It's family. I don't like to be left outside. Well, how do you know it's about family? When a brother shows up from nowhere, it ain't family. Maybe. Pa wants to talk to Clay alone. Of 
course, she told me she'd been married before. She also told me she'd had a child. But she said the baby had died. They lied. They lied to her and they lied to me. They lied. Who? My grandparents, my, my father's folks. They were against the marriage from the very beginning. They, they hated my mother. Didn't think she was good enough for their son. Well, when we all got the fever, my father died. They told my mother that, that I had died also. And See, when I was old enough to ask questions, they told me that she was dead. And after all this time, how did you find us? Well, last year I shook the wander dust off my heels and, and went back to New Orleans. Guess I got sentimental, wanted to put a flower or two on Mother's grave. But of course, that's when I found out there wasn't any grave. After that, I checked with the Hall of Records and around, and that's when I found out about, about you being married to my mother and about the Ponderosa. Clay, why didn't you tell us all this when you first got here? didn't want to push myself into a family. I don't know why I came here. I guess because I, I wanted to see my brother. Oh, and find out if I, if I liked you or not. No, none of this changes the fact that I better be moving on. Those, those miners are pretty hot under the collar. Oh, you, you'll be all right here in the Ponderosa. Are you sure, sir? Of course. They won't come out here. Uh, no, sir, that's not what I mean. What do you mean? I mean, do you believe me? Of course I do. Of course I believe you. The news is rather startling. You have to admit that. I, out of the blue, so to speak. It takes a little getting used to. Look, we, uh, we have plenty of room in here. Why don't you... Uh, why don't you move in from the bunkhouse? Thank you, sir. Adam? Lost a little Joe sleep? Yeah, it's uh, kind of late. Because I should have asked Hoss, Little Joan, Clay asleep. I suppose I'll be asking that from now on. Yeah, I guess you will. Well, he sure came out of the blue. Hmm? Well, he did kind of come out of nowhere. What are you driving at? <clears throat> well... I hope you don't mind, but uh, Hoss and I were kind of talking it over, and we, uh... Well, don't you think you ought to check his story out? You and Hoss think that we might have made up the whole thing? Well, we think it's important enough to know for sure. I mean, it uh, wouldn't do any harm to send a telegram to Judge Wharton down in New Orleans. Would it?
you doing in town? Just rode in all the way from the ranch to ask you the same question. Your boss said that there were some supplies I needed picking up. You know you were the one that was going to pick them up? No difference doesn't make it. I needed picking up. Look, Pa told you you were safe on the ranch, but not here in town. Look, it's working hours. The miners are underground. Just half of them. They work on shifts. Now, let's get this wagon loaded and get out of here. Brother Joe, you worry too much. What you need is a beer to help you relax. Since we're in town, why don't we take care of that, huh? Hey, wait a minute and use your head. Now, the town is hot. The saloon's one place you're going to run into trouble. You won't have to look that far. Seems to be here right now. Pretty hot day. Maybe a couple of beers would cool us all off. Since Saturday, we're kind of particular about the company we keep. Take a horse thief, you can see the horse he steals. A fellow robs a bank, well, there's the money. But a card cheat. Well, if he's good at it, it's over and done with before you know what's happened. If Sam hadn't been drinking, nothing would have happened. There was no reason for it. Well, Sam ain't here to argue the point, but we are. And we aim to do more than just argue. You figure on using that gun? I never draw first. Just like to keep the street clean. One gun's enough. Two guns, gentlemen. Now, why don't you all just forget it? We don't want anybody to get hurt. Why don't you keep your nose out of this cart, right? Friend or no friend, he's gonna get his. He's not just a friend, he's my brother. All right. There'll be another day. Use that beer now. Well, couldn't we just load the wagon and leave town? Maybe you're right, brother. Well, the beans are on the fire. We'll have a drink. Well, you better take it easy. We got to be back to camp before light. Well, here's just the thing that'll help us take it easy. Here, drink up. You sure you got enough? <laughs> hey, this is whiskey. Not exactly. <coughs> well, what is it then? Polke. Polke, what's that? Well, it's a drink they have down in Mexico. They make it out of cactus. When you were loading up the wagon, I got it from Manuel back at the livery stable. Come on, drink up. Yeah. It's hot, but it's good. Yeah, just like riding a nice, easy bronc. <laughs> but when he discovers that burr under his saddle, watch out. Yeah, don't worry about me. I can take it. You know, this is better than a saloon. Yeah, you're right, and the company's better, too. Hey, how'd you happen to learn about this, uh... Pulque? Pulque, yeah. Oh, when I was down in Mexico, it's the only kind of liquor they have down there, so you have to learn to like it. Now, what are you doing down there? Ah, uh, fighting with Juarez. Fighting with Juarez? What, in his army? Yeah, I was down there for two years, a lieutenant. Hey, how'd you happen to get mixed up in a thing like that? Well, the pay was good, and I happen to believe in what he was fighting for. Yeah, he was, he was fighting that, uh, that emperor, Maximilian, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I read a little bit about that somewhere. You know, Juarez was a, was a real Mexican, not a Spaniard. He was just like one of the thousands of peasants he led. A great man. Hmm. You know, it's kind of kind of sad he had to fail. Oh, he'll come back. And when he does, maybe, maybe I'll go back too. You know, we're getting much too serious. Come on, drink up, will you? <laughs> All right. I'll hey, look, I'll tell you about the girls that used to follow the army. <laughs> now, look, there was this one gal. Her name was Conchita. Oh, Conchita. So, you see, when we ran out, Conchita went right through the enemy lines and brought back a couple of jugs. <laughs> <laughs> brought back a couple of jugs. <laughs> hey, look. Now, that's a, that is the kind of girl. That Conchita. That's the kind of girl that I would like to have. Oh, Conchita, she had a sister. Rosita. Hey, Rosita. Hey, listen now, in all, in all seriousness, we ought to get down there and get that Conchita and that Rosita. I'll drink to that. Viva, Juarez. Viva! Mm. Viva! Viva la revolucion! Viva, viva! 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 Viva, viva Pulque! Ah, there's a lot of Pulque in there. Oh, that 
Gucci and Bonita. Ah, viva your Rosita. Viva my Rosita and Bonita's Gucci. Viva my brother! Hey, viva my brother! Viva! Viva my brother. We've got to get down there. And viva that Conchita and Bonita. Ah, viva. Morning, Joe. Morning. Morning. After a night of chewing the fat, nothing like a big breakfast to get you back in action. Hey, yeah, that's right. Speaking of fat, I want to have me some more of that fat back. He really ain't nothing quite like some good old salt sow belly for breakfast, right, Joe? Ah, uh, well, no. Well, sorry, fellas, something wrong? No, I'm just, I'm raring to go this morning. <laughs> it's too bad we drank all that pulque. You'd like it. You know, now, me, I personally prefer a great big glass of hot whiskey, about 100 proof. Oh, yeah. I guess we're just unlucky, huh? <laughs> well, morning, boys. Come on. Time to get to work. Oh, morning, Joseph. Say, hey, I've never seen you look better. Oh, I'm... Feeling real good, too. Oh, well, that's real fine, because we sure got a lot of work to do today. You, uh, boys had quite a chat last night. Yeah, I guess we overdid it. Well, I think he lived. <laughs> boys, I got to ride back to the ranch. Keep things moving, huh? Right, Pop. That Clay sure is a likable fellow, isn't he? Yeah, sure is. Yeah. You know, if me or you, either one, brought Joe home in the condition he was in last night, we wouldn't have heard the last of it till yet. Well, that's for sure. What do you mean a condition I'm in? I'm not in any kind of condition. I mean, what Pa said was get started. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm sorry, fella. <laughs> to see us. Yeah, I got the telegraph back from New Orleans. What did it say? Story checks out. What's the matter, then? Alvin Wharton is a very good lawyer. When he investigates, he gets all the facts. Marie was his mother. He was born in New Orleans, raised by his grandparents. It's all true. What's the trouble, Paul? Something that Alvin found out that happened two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah, in a little town in Texas. Chico Wells. Seems there was a card game. Clay was winning a lot of money. Matt accused him of cheating. Reached for his gun. Clay killed him. Yeah. That's sort of stretching a long arm of coincidence, ain't it? I'm afraid that's how a lot of people will look at it. How do you look at it? What are you going to tell little Joe? Well, he's going to have to face the fact that there can be weaknesses in people. Even those you care about. You gonna let Clay stay around? I mm. guess we'll have to give him the benefit of whatever doubts we have about him. I don't understand. What is he guilty of? Joseph, I'm not accusing him of anything. But we both know how he's lived. All right, he's led a different life. He's been alone. But it doesn't change the fact that he's my brother and he's still part of this family. Well, of course he is. I'm not disputing that. But he must realize, and you must help him realize, that well, things are different here. Tragedies like, like the other night with the miner. You keep saying that! 
Now, it was not his fault, and the only reason you'd have for saying that is because you think he was cheating. The only person who can answer that is Clay himself. All right, I'll talk to him. I think it might be better if I talked with him. Now, please let me talk to him, Bob. Please let me be the one. Clay, you know, I've been thinking. Now, the roundup's gonna be over in a couple of days, and I, I thought you and I could take a trip somewhere. Huh? Well, you know, Viva Juarez. Kind of like to go down to Mexico, see how the revolution's coming along. You know, it's not all just fun down there, Joe. As I told you the other night, a revolution's a pretty serious thing. I remember. I remember most of it. Look, if it's not Mexico, it'll be some other place. I don't care. I just want to take a trip and have some fun. We're brothers, aren't we? Now, the roundup's over, we'll collect our pay and take off. Okay, when the roundup's over, we'll figure out where we'll go. Good enough. of these strays rounded up by tomorrow. I'm so busy, I haven't had much chance to talk. Uh, yes, sir? I mean, uh, just Joe talked to. Oh, you mean about going to Mexico? What's this about Mexico? Well, the other night we talked about the two years I spent with Juarez in Mexico. He thought now, after the roundup, it might be fun to go down there. I see. That's all I talked to you about? Yes, sir. Well, what was he supposed to talk about, sir? Now, Clay, we, we understand what a rough time you've had these past 10 or 12 years, making your way alone. And uh, understand that your way of life is different from ours as a result. It's... Your values are different. The past is past. You're part of the family now, and we'd like you to stay part of the family. Hope that our way of life, our values, will be yours from now on. Well, sir, I, I don't know. You don't know what? I mean, I appreciate what you've said. And you're very generous, but I've got to be honest with you. I'm not sure that this is my kind of life. Well, are you sure it isn't your kind of life? No, sir. Would you try it? Yes, sir. Good. Let's forget these romantic notions about Mexico. <laughs> well, that was Joe's idea. Well, he was influenced by you. Try to use your influence the right way. Yes, sir, I'll try. See the house. Thanks again, Mr. Walsh. Healthy bonus for all hands this year. That sure is. It's one roundup that ended up better than it started. <laughs> Be careful of that money, Joel. I will, sir. Thank you. Hold it, Conrad. Go in the alley. Come on, move. new brother of yours. We've been waiting for him. What's the matter? Is he scared to come to town? Nobody's scared. Look, we just don't want any trouble, that's all. Well, it ain't always easy to avoid trouble. Guess we'll have to give you a message for that brother. Go on, take him, boys.
Apparently, the miner has meant it as a message to you. I figured that's what it was. I'm sorry, sir. I should have taken off before now. I'll, I'll pack my things tonight. No, Clay, that's no answer. As I told you, you're family now. We'll handle it together. No, sir, that's not what I mean. You see, trouble's been following me all my life. No matter what I do, no matter where I go, and now it's, it's followed me here. Well, running is not going to solve that problem. We'll, we'll handle it somehow. I'll get some broth that I've been heating up. and Adam are paying off the man, and he'll be back soon. Clay's downstairs. Does he know about the miners? Yeah, he knows. Well, I sure hope he doesn't blame himself. You stop worrying about what other people are thinking. You drink that broth. Hey, tell Clay I want to see him. Best thing for you to do right now, young man, is rest. I'll rest as soon as I see Clay. You drink up that broth, and I'll get him. Thanks. Where's Clay? Joe Clay's left. I checked his room. His things are gone. He's gone? Tell me what you said to him, Pa. I didn't say anything to him, Joe. I didn't even see him. I'd already asked him to stay, be part of the family. Son, he's old enough to make his own decisions. And the important thing for you right now is to rest. Take care of yourself. Good night, son. Good night, Pop.
Why don't you leave without me? You better get off that horse before you fall off. Come on over here and sit down. And all things, I just didn't stand up. I think I feel better. Sorry I don't have any pulky, but... Here. Viva coffee. The last thing I need any more of that pulky. Why'd you leave without me? Just like I told your pa. Trouble's been following me all my life. I mean, look what happened to you just on account of me. That's no reason I've been in fights before. Yeah, but this time you were lucky. It was their fists. Next time it could be their guns. Now, Clay, we're brothers. Your fight is my fight. This thing with the miners, we can settle together. Look, you have family now. Don't leave. It won't work, Joe. Clay, we're brothers. We can make it work. Look, let me explain something to you. Just because we're brothers doesn't mean we have to think alike, be alike, do alike. Yes, it happens with some brothers, like you and Adam and Hoss. Why can't it work with you and me? Because it just won't. Look, you lived all your life on the Ponderosa, and you like it. But you see, I couldn't. It would be like being in a cage. All right, then I won't ask you to stay at the Ponderosa now. We'll travel around together if you feel you're ready to you settle down. You could no more live my life than I could live yours. Well, how do you know? I've never tried it. Look, you saw what happened to that miner. It's happened before, and it can happen again. Maybe things like that won't happen, Clay, if we're together. No, it couldn't. Look, look, you just get in my way. Clay, you don't mean that, you know it. Well, will you get it through your head that I don't want you along? I don't need your family, and I don't need you. Now, will you go home, Joe, where you belong? Bring it back someday. son. That's all we can do for him, kid. Would you like me to say some words over him? Ain't anything to say. Ought to be some flowers. I'd be able to find some if we looked around. No. Nah, there ain't any. I got a red hair ribbon he brought me once. I think it'd be real nice. Pretty red hair ribbon would be right nice. Go get it. You know something? I've been here most all morning, and I still ain't got you two gals straight in my mind. Now, which one are you, Will or Charlie? Will. Will. Is that short for Willa or something like that? No, just Will. 
Kind of a peculiar name for a couple of gals, ain't it? Will and Charlie. What'd you say your name was? Hoss? That's right. Hoss. You mean like a critter? Yeah, like a critter. I don't think I'd take on about names like Will and Charlie if I had a name like Hoss. You want something? Yeah, I'd sort of like to talk to you for a minute if I could. What about? About you and your little sister. I mean, you're being left here alone and all. We'll make out. You want me to thank you for burying Pa? All right, thank you. And now you can ride on out, because we don't need you no more. If I hadn't a chance to ride in here this morning to get some water for my horse, you'd have been in a peck of trouble. I said thanks, didn't I? Look, Charlie, you can't just stay here alone. Ain't gonna stay here. Where are you gonna go? You got kin folks? We got Aunt Chloe. Yeah? Where does she live? She lives in Cantle. All right. You come along and I'll see to it you get to her. You don't have to. We don't want you to. Can't you understand that? We'll get there by ourselves. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but you do. That's the way it's got to be. I ain't about to let the two of you young'uns get out on that desert all by yourself. Now, you get your paraphernalia all collected here and get it ready, and I'm going to go out and saddle your horse. wasn't buried with him. Yeah, I don't think it's around here no place. Don't look that way, do it. That double-crossing snake. He was no good. After all you've done for him, look what he's done to us. What do you mean, done to us? <laughs> he's been taken care of. Just one less share. Now, come on, we've wasted enough time around here. Get Lou and Con out of that shack. Con! Lou! Yeah. Blake says get out here! They say fit to raise pigs in. There's nothing here. Now, Tully, come here. I spent some time out there checking on tracks. I found out plenty, too. Now, somebody rode in here yesterday and buried Gallagher, then rode out again with his kids. And that ain't all he rode out with. I'll bet on that. Yesterday? Then we still got a chance? Con? You know Gallagher better than the rest of us. Do they have any friends or relatives? Friends? That snake? <laughs> Most likely hatched from under a rock. <laughs> Maybe some drifter happened by. No drifter's gonna take the chance on slowing himself down with two kids tagging along once he had his hands on that bundle of ours. No. Now, come here. Let me show you something. This whole stretch of desert here is just one big trap. And Gallagher's partner or friend or whoever he is is heading right into it. Now, we're here at Gallagher's place. Our man is making tracks in the beelines of Cantle right here. 
My only two ways out of Cantle. One over the mountains by stagecoach, this way. The other, out across the desert, this way. Now, if they're going out through the desert, they have to go to a place called Furnace Wells, right here. It's the only place that has water at this time of year. Now, Lou. Yeah. I want you to ride directly to Furnace Wells. And if they head that way, you'll be sitting there, waiting on them. Con, I want you to ride across country. Right here, they have a relay station. I want you to check out every coach that goes through there. W what about me? Well, you'll ride with me. We'll trail them. They got a day's ride on us. But it's a two-day ride to Cantle. With any kind of luck, we got a good chance. He can't be making good time trailing those kids along with him. Now, let's get going. <laughs> What is it, really? I mean, is it something like Willow? I think Willow would be a pretty name for a little gal. Uh, who goes naming me after a tree? Yeah. Well, what about, uh, what about Willow Wall? You know what a Willow Wall is? It's a great big wind. Nah, that ain't a real name. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just mean enough to keep calling you that if you don't tell me what your real one is. Well, it's Wilhelmina, but don't you use it on me. It's a terrible name. I don't think it's so bad. It's terrible. Charlie's ain't so bad. Her whole name is Charlotte, but... What'd you tell him that for? I ought to whack you good. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, hold on a minute. I tell you what, I'll forget the whole thing. As far as I'm concerned, you're just plain Charlie and she's just plain Will. You'll never hear me call you by them other names again. Your bed's all made up. Time you was in it. It ain't even dark yet. Hardly. Now you go on now. Yeah, why did do you always have to be so bossy? Because Pa said you was to mind me. He's... Guess I shouldn't have said that about Pa. Guess she'd almost forgotten for a while. Charlie, what happened to your Pa? I mean, how did he get shot? I don't know. He just came home like that. Heard, never told us who'd done it. You have any, uh, have any enemies? Anybody want to see him hurt? Wasn't anybody like that. Pa was always helping folks out. Everybody liked him. I told you to get to bed. I forgot Judge Telford. Judge who? Judge Telford. You want to see him? Good gracious, get that thing out of here, honey. Them things dangerous. He gets cranky being shut up all day. Strange pet, ain't it, for a little gal? Well, I had a puppy once, but it ran off. Charlie said most likely coyotes ate it. Anyways, Judge Telford ain't gonna run off. Even if he did, I bet nobody eat him. Yeah, it ain't too likely. Go to bed. Yeah. Good night, Hoss. Good night, sweetie. Must be a pretty lonely life for a little young'un to have to turn to a scorpion for a friend. It's always lonesome on a ranch. Didn't you say you grew up on one? Yeah, but I have my paw and brothers. You got brothers? How many? Two. Gee, that it's great having brothers. We was gonna have some. Only Ma died and Will was born. Pa was gonna raise a whole family of boys like the ones he come from. You know, he had five brothers. Is that a fact? Yeah. They was famous in Boston where they all grew up. Pa used to say all you'd have to do was go down to Scully Square and tell them you're a Gallagher. And they'd just about give you the whole town. Uh, Charlie, you're, uh, you're Aunt Chloe. Is she your 
Paul's sister or your Ma's? Pa's. His only sister. Like I said, the Gallagher's go in mostly for boys. Ain't you asleep yet? It's lonesome over here. Ain't you ever coming to bed? Now, you listen here. You lie down and go to sleep. Charlie? What? What's the matter? Him. He's real nice, Charlie. All right. He's nice. Now go to sleep. She all right? Yeah. She ain't usually such a blame nuisance. Bet she'll be glad to get shut of us tomorrow. Guess we're both kind of a nuisance. Tell you what, Charlie. When I first run on to you out there and realized I was going to have to take you to Aunt Chloe, I must say I was feeling pretty put out. Sure, I don't blame you. But let me tell you something. It ain't been that bad a chore. As a matter of fact, I've kind of enjoyed it. I'm glad we run into each other. I really am. Yeah. Well, good night. Night, sweetie. Well, that storekeeper ain't ever heard of your Aunt Chloe. You sure this is where she lives? Well, I guess so. How long has it been since you visited her? I don't know. A long time ago. What happened to Charlie? Where's she? Well, I guess she's looking for Aunt Chloe, too. All right, just come along peaceable now, and won't nobody get hurt. What are you talking about, Sheriff? Where? Come where? You should have been smart and stayed clear of my town, mister. We don't cotton the kidnappers around here. Oh, Sheriff, I ain't no All right, now, come on. Sheriff, let's, let's go. go. What'd you do, Charlie? That sheriff. Aw, oh, shut up. We'll send a letter. They'll turn him loose. He's an awful nice fella. I wish he could come to Boston with us. Ain't nobody gonna get to Boston unless we get on that stage. Now, come on. my time piece, I'm just about an hour shy of being a week early. <laughs> Say, ain't you, girl? Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, just wanted to tell you we'll be here about ten minutes while we change horses. Long way to the top of that summit. That's where we're going to stay the night. Oh, we don't ride all night? Oh, no, not over them mountains. They're tricky even in daylight. We're going to sleep up there at Walker's Pass. There's a nice little roadhouse up there. Say, can I get you something, drink of water, maybe? No. Well, I better go tend those horses. Charlie, what did he do that for? Shut up. Don't 
didn't say nothing. That man hurt you at all, kids. Ought to get the sheriff back in town. No, no, you don't have to do that. I, we know him. You know him? He's my, our uncle. Mister, could you rent us a horse? We gotta go back to town. Go back? Can you, mister? We'll leave it at the depot in town. Honest, we will. Are uh, you in some kind of trouble, miss? We gotta go back. We was running away from home. Didn't figure they'd worry so much about us. <laughs> oh, now, that's all right. We'll take care of you. Well, I guess she knows what she's doing. Better get her a horse. All uh, right. Don't you kids worry about a thing. We'll take care of you. I thought we was going to Boston. Ain't you got any sense? That fellow's gone back for the others, the bunch that was after Pa. But I thought he had it back for town. What are we going back there for? Because now they'll all come after the stage thinking we're on it. Only we'll be headed the other way. Now, come on. We got to hurry. Wait a minute. Let's, let me put Judge Telford in. Uh, you know, it wasn't my fault them Virginia City folks took all day to answer that telegram. It must have been a wheel of a story that little gal told on me. That's all I can say. Well, it wasn't just the story. There have been a lot of funny things going on around here. Like what? That uh, big uh, express robbery up about 50 miles north of here happened last week. I got instructions to pick up any suspicious-looking strangers and hold them. Uh, that's all I was doing. Yeah? Sheriff, where's my horse? Well, they're both of them down at the livery stable. But it's uh, kind of late to start traveling. You're welcome to stay here if you'd like. No, thanks. Doggone, I'd like to know why they'd done it. You know, I was getting to thinking those two little old tacks was kind of taking a liking to me. See you, Sheriff. Hey, get on off of me. What are you doing? Glad to see you. I don't know why I should be. I ought to take both of you out and give you a good spanking. That's what I ought to do. How come you to tell that sheriff all them lies on me? How come? Well, what are you going to do with us now? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I'm going to take you to Aunt Chloe and get rid of you. We'll be shut of one another once and for all. Now, for the last time, where's she at? She's at Joburg. Joburg? But Joburg's 30 miles across the desert. All right, if that's what it's going to take, then that's what it's going to be. I'm going to take you to her. Uh. Yeah? Well, as long as we got across the desert, it gets kind of hot out there during the day, you know. Yeah? Well, why don't we leave right now while it's cool and all? After all, you've been resting all day. Yep, that's all I've been doing, the rest of them. All right. Tell it one time more, mister. Just in case you left something out. Well, they got off the stage at the relay station. They buried a horse. They said they'd run away from home and they were going back. And they did. And, mister, that's all I know. And there wasn't anybody else with them. You sure of that? Yes, sir. I'm sure. All the way back to town. We must have rode right past them coming out here. The man I was with them. <laughs> Pretty shrewd. Must have planned it that way. Gave the kids instructions to double back. One chance at him. All I'd like is one chance. You'll get it. There's only one place they can get water. One place, Furnace Wells. Can't we go any faster? 
Look, Charlie, you want to kill these horses? It's your big hurry, anyhow. Well, it's so hot, I figured we could rest the horses when we get to Furnace Wells. Look, your little sister's half sick now from being so tired. I got some blankets over there, and we'll make a lean to it and get in out of the sun for a while. You're gonna stop here? Are you, uh, you looking for somebody? What makes you say that? Well, you want to get out of town last night in the middle of the night. Hurrying all day today, I just thought... I just don't like wasting time. Paul always said, when you make up your mind to do something, you best get it done. Don't you ease off a little bit. I mean, it ain't like you got to wear the pants in the family now. You, you got your Aunt Chloe. I mean, you're just a little gal. It'd be different if... If I was a boy? Whole lots of things would be different if I was a boy. I could have helped Paul make a ranch out of that brush patch back there. Wouldn't have been such a burden to him. He wanted a family of boys so bad it'd like to kill him. Yeah, I guess it did kill him. Because if he hadn't have been so worried about Will and me... About us growing up and not having nothing, he wouldn't have gone and... Gone and what? Nothing. You're trying to tell me you, your Paul got himself killed trying to provide for you and Will? No. How'd he get shot, Charlie? I don't know. I told you before, I don't know. Now leave me alone! Somebody coming. See the haze on the horizon over there? Looks like they're still about a half a day away, but they're coming pretty hard and fast, according to all the smoke they're throwing up. I know who they are. I don't know. Imagine we better be getting over in the furnace wells. Yeah. Please.
Lots of tracks. They must have made camp here. Let's rest the horses a while. Mine's finished. He'll last. Come on, let's go. What are you doing? I said, let's get gone. <laughs> Hold oh, still. Let me take a look. Big old granddaddy scorpion. What's left of him? Scorpion? Folks die from scorpion bites, don't they? Nothing but a sting. A sting? My, my hand's all afire. I gotta get me a doctor. Come on. I'll take care of it. No, no. no I'm going back and get me a real doctor. All the way back to town? Look, you stupid. I'm going. Don't you try to stop me. Let him go. Go on, you stupid fool. Go back to town. Now get! But Blake, you... Hold it. You won't need this while you're gone. Now get. Go on. Get! Scorpion, huh? That dirty. Where would I catch up with him? Let's go. much to drink. We ran out of water about an hour ago. Everybody's does. Well, well's right over there. Water's dollar a bucket, so don't spill none. A dollar a bucket? Well, sure. That's a only well in the whole darn desert. Dug it all myself, all hundred foot of it. Man's got to get something for his labor. All right. Charlie, take Will on in the house. Hey, you kids come on with me. I got a real fine supper cooking for you. Just about gived up on you. I thought you took the other road. You be real careful of that thing. You got the wrong man, Mr. Sure, sure. Take it easy. All I want from you is no trouble and thirty-four thousand dollars. Thirty? You're crazy. I said no trouble. Now where's it at? I don't know what you're talking about. Now look here, oh. Mister. <laughs> Got a little too close to the horses and got himself traumatized, I reckon. He sure did. You know him? Yes, sir. He came in last night, said he was waiting for friends. He wouldn't be a friend of yours, would he, Charlie? No. Look, Will, you go on with the man, put the horses up. Charlie and I got some talking to do. feet away from this since we left your place. I would have known it was no just ordinary laundry bag. Yep. Just about $34,000 like the man said. It's ours, Hoss. Mine and Will's. Is it? That sheriff back at Kendall told me about a big express robbery. Happened right here close. Just about the same time your Paul got a bullet put to him. That is the money from that robbery, ain't it? I don't care. Pa gave it to us. He gave it to me and told me to keep it, to go to Boston with it. You can't do that, Charlie. You're Paul. 
Those other men, they stole that money. Well, like Pa used to say, sometimes you gotta steal. Some folks, that's the only way they can get anything. They can work all their lives and still have nothing. That's why I'm keeping it. Charlie, you can't. Your Pa was wrong. You can't keep it because it ain't yours. It is! We paid for it, didn't we? We lost our Pa for it. I ain't gonna let him be dead for nothing. He was too good of a man to die for nothing. <laughs> Get you something to eat. I'll get you some rest, too. We can't stay here. Now those men coming after us. Hey, you look here, I ain't forgot about them. Don't you worry about them. Good husky bar on that door, and if there's gonna be any trouble, this is a place to have it right here. Look, Charlie. I'd like to be a friend to you and Will, give some help to you more than just somebody you're using for a while. Well, howdy. Right glad to see you. Out kind of early, ain't you? Did you see anything of a man riding through here with two kids? Oh, yes, sir. They, they was here. Right lively bunch they was, too. Tully, check the house. You know, them two youngsters snuck out in the middle of the night. <laughs> and this other one, well, he, he woke up and smoked right after him. He was real upset. Well, then I got up and I walked around, too. And you know what? Somebody had gone and broke into my storehouse. You know what they took? Two 50-pound sacks of salt. Well, now, that had me real stumped. What did they want with the, all that salt? Well, I wondered about it and wondered about it right up until I made my morning's coffee and then I found out. You know what? They dumped it right into that well, a whole hundred pound of salt. Ain't that a corker? Well, only water in the whole desert. Well, I got to move back into town now. It'd take a whole month to get that there salt out of that there well. Couldn't pump that brine out no more. <laughs> Shut up, you dead old fool. Well, I... Tell I, I got to go and... Tell him get out of there. Lose this side. He's all busted up. Get on your horse. L let's get some water. <laughs> There's no more water. He salted the well. He what? If I have to crawl on my hands and knees through all hellfire, I'll get him. I gonna have to do hog tie you two gals why don't you just let us be i told charlie we ought to not leave you alone when the bad men came did they come after we run away well, not by the time i'd left ed who are they anyhow i don't know well guess we don't have to worry about them no more then because charlie fixed it so they couldn't follow no farther will i'm gonna whack you if you don't shut up wait a minute wait a minute what do you mean you fixed it she nothing we gonna sit here in the sun all day? We're gonna stay right here till I find out what you did. She put salt in the well. Boy, boy, oh boy, you just full of tricks, ain't you? 
I'll tell you one thing for sure, young lady. This money is going back to the folks it belongs to. If nothing else happens, that's going to happen, I promise. Two kids smoking on out of here. I'll stay here and talk to them. Go on, get out. You hear me? Get out of here. Please, please come, Haas. All right. We'll give them a run for their money. Come on, let's go. Get, get them, get them. She says, get out of here. Go on, you gotta. Oh, Hans. Come on. What's the matter, mister? You all out of tricks? <laughs> you can't see me, huh? Well, I want you watching. I want you watching me. I want you to see the slugs coming at you. I've been a long time waiting. Mister? Hey, you dang fool kids, get out of here! nothing about anything. It was me who did him. Oh, you gotta be plumb crazy, trying to make me believe it was them two that done it. There, what my pa took from you. Why, you're nothing but a kid. A kid run me ragged, made a fool out of me. You're nothing but a miserable kid. Gallagher's kid, mister. Guess that makes the difference. Gallagher's kid, huh? I suppose you're real proud. Proud of a no-good horse thief. And it was me 
Me gave him the only chance in his whole misbegotten life. And he crossed me. Now I'm going to give you what I gave him. What are you things he taught you and Willa, I ain't in agreement with, but I know one thing for sure. He loved you and he loved you a lot. And he was proud of you. He was proud of you for being Gallagher's. You can still go back to Boston and Scully Square and meet all them other Gallagher's. But you'll never be able to face them as long as you live if you pull that trigger. Or maybe you don't care. Maybe you just don't care what them Gallagher's would think of you. Cargo going east. Dog going right, and I'm gonna hold every stage driver from here to Boston personally responsible for him. Oh, now you don't worry about that, horse. All the drivers along the line have been alerted. Liam? <laughs> what a difference. Say, now, you ladies ain't gonna run off on me again, are you? No. All right, now, get aboard. Oh, my, I don't believe I ever saw two prettier little girls in my whole life. Dresses. Ain't they awful? Hey, uh, listen, while you was in there getting dolled up for the trip, the sheriff told me that you're likely to pick up a real nice piece of change for catching all them outlaws. You got the whole bunch? Well, you did kind of leave them scattered from here to breakfast, but uh, we got them all. I'll tell you something else. Judging from the sound of that message I got from Boston, all you kin folks are going to be there waiting for you, including your Aunt Chloe. Aunt Chloe? That's right. As a matter of fact, she's the one that wired me. Beats me how anybody in Joburg could send a telegram from Boston. But then, of course, she is a Gallagher, ain't she? <laughs> Come on, let's get a word. Would you write one back? Oh, sure I will, Will. Oh, Hoss. notion that old Boston town is in for some excitement like, like it ain't seen since that tea party. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Leif. I'm going to call that ten dollars. Here's your ten. And ten more. His luck can't go on forever. I wish you fellas had stopped fussing that way. 
After all, I didn't want to play this dang game in the first place. There's, uh, your ten. And, uh, there's another ten. Well, I got your new saddle and my carbine, so let's go. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, Adam. Let me, let me play this hand up. That's twenty dollars to me, right? All right, I ain't, I ain't got but ten, so I'm, I'm ten in the pot. I'm gonna call that ten. You mean you've lost all that four hundred dollars my brother paid you for that horse? Look, I feel bad enough as it is now. Just be quiet, will you? Let's see your cards, Ed. Ain't it a caution? How them cards just fell together? Mm -hmm. I never did see such a town. I lost my poke, I lost my horse, I lost the money I got for the horse. I'm getting out of here while I still got boots to walk in. <laughs> Goodbye, fella. Well, uh, life looks like you won yourself a little pile of money there. How much did you lose, big brother? <laughs> oh, uh, he only lost exactly $160. $160? Boy, you need a keeper. Dad burning Adam, I felt lucky. Well, the next time you feel lucky, let me know, will you? I'll see if I can't lock you up somewhere. Well, let's get this horse back to the ranch. Wait a minute, Adam. You can't take that horse away from here. What are you talking about? You gave him the $400 for the horse, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And the horse trader lost the $400 to me. Well, that's his bad luck. Oh, well, the horse had a little bad luck, too. He lost $160. Why don't you sue him for it? Oh, I wouldn't sue him. I just uh, sell the horse. You're what? Adam, look. After I borrowed that first hundred, Lave here made me put the horse up for security on the rest of it. Security? Yeah. <laughs> security. <laughs> yeah. Security. You know, if you weren't so big, I'd just poke you one right in the mouth. Well, we'll get you your 160 somehow. Yeah. And make it soon. Or I'll sell him. I got enough hay burners around here already. Leaf, how come you so on me? <laughs> it's the business I'm in. These critters standing around, eating and drinking and making me do all the work. I just hate them. Like you hate poker. Yeah. I'm just plain mean. <laughs> yeah, you sure are. Maybe we get that money off Paul, huh? For a thoroughbred racehorse? You know how he feels about horses that can't earn their keep. Yeah, but what if we explained to him about the sweepstakes in Virginia City at the end of the month and the winner taking $1,500? Yeah, but you gotta win to get it. Adam, we'd have the only thoroughbred racehorse in the whole race. Well, we may have the only thoroughbred horse in the race is gonna lose. Now, of all the fool things, you sure take the prize. Dad, give me that, Adam. We We'll get it somehow. I'd have known what you were doing, I never would have spent the rest of the money on your saddle and my rifle. Oh, let me see your new rifle. Hey, see somebody's got himself a brand new saddle. Yeah, Paul got it down to Lone Star Leather. Oh, don't tell me Lev Davis made this. Handmade all the way through. Yeah, that's the mail came in for you, too. Okay. What a beauty. Joseph, will you take your feet off the set, Pete? Yes, sir. I saw this rifle down at Spence Pullins. Sure wish I could afford one like it. Well, if you saved your money, you could. Yeah, you ain't got none of that stuff stashed out somewhere, have you, little brother? Who, me? Heck no. Couldn't hang on to a dollar if it was tied to me. Give me that thing before you wear it out. That's right. You know, Joe, you need to develop some better habits with your money than that. Yes, and you're just the one to teach him, aren't you? Now, listen to this. Joseph, how many times do I have to tell you? 
It's from uh, Enos Mumford. So, Ben, if you could spare one of your boys for a few weeks to lend me a hand with the stock, I'd be obliged. If some of the stock has been ridden and gentle, I figure about $12 a head. Should be a fair price to finish the job. Your good friend, Enos Mumford. $12 a head, huh? Mm-hmm. How many has he got left? Well, he's got uh, 18 horses. $12 a head. That 18 be... $216. Yeah, that's right. That's that's almost a hundred. That's better than $100 a week. At figuring two weeks to bust them. Yeah. I'll go. Well, wait a minute. At $100 a week, we can both go. I'm pretty near finished that fence anyhow, Paul. Uh, hold on a minute now. I, I can't spare everybody. Only one of you can go. Well, it doesn't make a difference as long as one of us goes. Yeah, that's, that's all right. You go, Adam. Yeah, well, wait a minute. You two aren't the only ones around here who can sit a bronc. He's right. He should have a chance to go, too. All right, we'll do it the fair way. We'll, we'll draw for it. Let's go. <clears throat> now, the one who picks the short match will not go. The one who picks the long one will. Well, two to one odds isn't too bad. Now, we have two short ones and one long one. You go first, little brother. You're older than I am. You go first. Oh, come on. All right, that's it. in our day, is it? Dad, come in a wall of corn oh, for Come on, on hoss. <laughs> oh, youth must be served. It seems a shame to send a boy to do a man's job. Oh, I think maybe this boy could manage it. Huh? Yeah, but Paul, all that money in here, just throw it away like he always does. Uh, well, I agree that his money habits aren't all that they should be. Yeah, well, don't you worry, Pa. Don't you worry about that, huh? Oh, indeedy. Now, after seeing this new rifle, Adams, I'm going to develop some new money-saving habits. He... Would you mind? Well, I'm glad you're picking up some of your older brother's better habits. Oh, I'd like to hear from Ben one way or the other. Yeah, I heard a lot about them Cartwrights. Sure must be something. Folks say they know more about ranching than anybody in the territory. I wouldn't say that. No, I guess I did teach Ben Cartwright all he knows about ranching. Couldn't help but some of it rub off on his sons. Go to. You'll earn that $12 a head breaking these Bronx. Yeah, uh, he sure will. What do you mean by that? Well, of course, says it, uh... You got tossed off of most of them before you hurt your back. Now, see here, Sam Finney. I wouldn't be repeating that around, you hear? Now, get down off that fence and help me saddle up one of them blasted Bronx. I'm not waiting for the Cartwrights. But Cora says you should stay away from them Bronx. Cora says women should stick to their pies and cooking and leave men's work to a man. Now, Pete, bring them in. <laughs> Still think you ought to wait for one of them Cartwrights. Man of your age. Man my age? Why, you old coot, I'm 20 years younger than you. Well, that still puts you past the middling years. Well, shut up and hold that bronc. <laughs> what are you up to? Oh, I do believe, Enos Mumford, you must be in your second childhood. You'll be small comfort to me if you break your neck. Will you stop that screeching and yelling? I'm having enough trouble with this bronc without you. <laughs> Get him loose. Enos, Enos, are 
Are you all right? <coughs> yes, sir. Now, see oh, what you've done. What is it? You oh. broke my watch. Of all the hard-headed, uh, stubbornest husbands the good Lord ever gave to a woman, no. you... Now, you get up and get out of this corral, Enos Milford. I'll never be able to ride him with you in this corral now. Uh, Man's sakes, little Joe. Howdy, Mrs. Milford. Oh, we didn't see you coming. My, how you've grown. Come on, uh, leave, leave, leave me be. Didn't, didn't know when you'd get here. How are you? So I just thought I'd take the top off that there jug head. Good to see you. He must have stepped in the hole. Enos. Uh, oh, uh, I'd like you to meet a neighbor friend of mine, uh, Sam Finney. Sam, how are you? Hi, hey, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, just call me Joe. Oh, just seeing you again, little Joe, makes me realize how time flies. That's been a long time. Must be about two years, Mrs. Milford. How's the ranch going? Oh, not so good. With taxes and the price of feed up, and me being retired. You see what I have to put up with? Ever since he's retired, he's been like an old range steer. <laughs> Cora, you just handle the house chores and cooking, and I'll handle the business matters in my own way. Uh, Oh, well, speaking of cooking, I'll bet little Joe would like a slice of your famous apple pie you were baking. Sounds pie. good. Yeah. Pie? Yeah. Oh! Oh, Enos, <laughs> I guess none of us is perfect. Oh. <laughs> oh, there, little Joe. That little bay there, uh, she's still rough, but I sat her till she started banging me up against the corral fence and I had to get off. Yeah, well? Well, what? Well, then she's never been rode. Oh, I sure enough had her whipped until she started bumping my leg against the corral fence. Hmm. Yeah, what about the others? Oh, that, uh, Sorrel and Black. Oh, they gave me plenty of trouble. Well, what about the Sorrel and Black? Well, the, the sorrel broke my cinch uh, when I nearly had him until uh, me and him parted company. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> what about the black? Uh, uh, well, uh, well, the truth is uh, I lost the stirrup. And you know as well as I, little Joe, that a bucking horse will generally pile you good if that happens. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, boy. Mr. Milford, I thought I was stealing when my pa told me you'd pay me $12 a head to, to break that stock of yours, including the ones that you'd claimed you gentled yourself. But the fact of the matter is, I don't know how many horses out there have thrown you. But you said you could handle the rough ones. Oh, I can. I can, but you know, and I know, that any horse out there that's tossed you is going to be tougher to stick on the next time. And I got to stick on those horses till they're broke where they throw me 50 times or more. So? So... So I'll ride all the stock. And I'll charge you $15 a head for the ones you rode and $12 for the others. Now, uh, see here, little Joe Card, right? You're not squeezing me for more money. Talk like that sounds like your pa put you up to it. My pa did not put me up to this. Mm. I put me up to this. Yeah. If you don't like the deal, well, get yourself another rider. Well, how about thirteen fifty? How about fifteen dollars? You're pretty shrewd for a young man. Yeah, that's a habit I've been developing lately. All right, little Joe, it's a deal. Mr. Milford, that's a wise choice. <laughs>
Sorry, fellas. Hope you didn't come in here to play that dang game again. <clears throat> no, we didn't come in to play the dang game. We come in to get our dang horse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was coming out there to see you about that. Hey, ain't nothing happened to him, has he, Leif? Oh, no, nothing. Nothing except me eats more than any critter I ever had in here. <laughs> it's caution how that critter eats. And then, uh, and then with no exercise, he, he starts kicking down the stall. Well, then we'll just have to take him off your hands, get him back to our place. Oh, well, uh, you got the, uh, 160? Well, not exactly, but... Uh, no buts. No money. No horse. Well, now, come on, Leif. Dad, come it. You know me and Adam. You know you'll get your money. Uh, well, uh, where is it, then? Uh, we've overextended ourselves lately, and we're a little short. Well, your pa's got lots of it. Well, why don't you get it from him? Well, you see, every family has its quirks, and under the circumstances, going to our pa is one of them. Oh. Well, how about little Joe? Everybody knows how he throws his money around. Uh, by the way, I ain't seen little Joe lately. Where's he been? Ah, uh, he's been working. A couple of weeks now. Yeah, come on, Adam. We'll see you later. I'll give you just two days to get that critter out of here. Why you ever want a hay burner like that, I'll never know. He's doing that. Yeah, but can he move? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm hurting a little bit, but the money kind of soothes all that. Well, with all that hurting, you must be doing a pretty good job. If you're hurting too bad, I'll be happy to take over for you. Oh, well, that's terribly generous of you, but I think I can handle it. What's it all about? You two certainly didn't come over here just to visit. Why, Why else would we, little brother? Well, because it's a long ride from the Ponderosa, and we grew up together, remember? You know, I think our younger brother is losing a little respect for his elders since he began uh, making all that money. You're right, Adam. He's getting plumb smart-alecky. Oh, boy. Talk like that sounds like you're about a foot away from cattle rustling. How would you like to own a real racehorse? Long-legged Kentucky thoroughbred. You see, we got a chance to buy, I should say, steel from this dead-broke horse trader, the swiftest-looking animal you ever laid eyes on. Now, I may have a couple of faults, but when it comes to judging horse flesh, there ain't nobody else in this territory that's better than me. This horse is a winner. How much you want to borrow? Little Joe seems to be developing a certain kind of hardness, don't he? We need 160. How come you didn't borrow it from Paul? You know how he is about riding stock that you can't work cattle with. Look, Joe, we just want to buy this horse for the one race there in Virginia City. And we're going to sell him right after he wins. Oh, no, you can't lose. This horse can fly. We'll split the 1,500 three ways, you, Hoss, and me. What do I get for security? Security. Security? Security? You want $160? You can't yeah. lose. Oh, come on, Adam. Look, I know you're a good judge of horse flesh. But you're talking about winning a race that hasn't been run yet. Now, there is a possibility. Well, let me upset you. I know it is a remote possibility, but there is a possibility he could lose. Joe, look, why don't you do me and old Adam a real big favor and, and loan us that money? Security. 
You'll own a third of the horse. Security. Joe, you can't lose. Uh oh. Security. Ah, security, security, security. You keep talking about security. Now, what do you consider security? Well, what are you yelling at? You want me to spend $160 for that horse? I don't need the horse. Go ahead. Hey, well, look, look at it from my point of view now. You want me to buy a third interest in a horse I've never seen? You want me to buy a pig and a poke without any, any kind of security, eh? All right. What do you consider security? Oh, little things. Your new saddle. And that, uh, that new rifle Adam just bought. You are a thief. Steal from his own kin. Give up on the whole thing. Oh, wait, wait. Now, I know that we are only half brothers, but we are brothers. Agreed? No, well, I always thought so till now. All right. young brother here wants security for $160 so let's give it to him if the horse wins you get one third of the $1,500 prize money if he loses we give you our share of the horse to sell as you so please is it a deal? Hmm. Is that horse as fast as he says it is? Like Adam said, he ain't no fool when it comes to judging livestock, Joe. Well, that saddle of yours wouldn't have done me much good anyway. Size of that thing. But boy, you know that rifle of Adam's. That's a nice one. So if the horse loses, I want the horse and the rifle. was nice upon Adam to, to talk to me about using my head about money. Yeah, you're you're getting good at it too, Joe. I'll go inside and see if I can get that advance. Excuse me, Adam. You boys over here, you get lonesome for little Joseph? <laughs> uh, we were, we just got over it. No, we came over to talk about some business. Yep, I'm afraid it wasn't the smartest thing we ever did, neither. Well, now, what kind of business you boys in? We bought ourselves a racehorse. A racehorse? A racehorse? Yes, sir. A real honest to gosh thoroughbred. We're going to enter him in that Virginia City race next week. That a fact? Mm -hmm. Enos, get that look out of your eye. Now, what's wrong, Mrs. Milford? Enos once bought himself a racehorse. Almost lost his shirt on it, too. He's the one, Cora, if he hadn't have fallen and broke a leg. Nevertheless, I don't hold with racing or betting. And I'm surprised your pa let you boys get mixed up in it. Well, actually, he hasn't had a chance to say anything about it yet. Well, now, that's what comes of men living without a woman around. I tell you, whenever a man... Cora, has to go stop alone... that cackling and set out some pie for the boys. They've been looking forward to it. Oh, goodness, if I'd only known they were coming, I'd just put the pies in the oven. They're not done yet. Cora, you're giving me a reputation as a liar. I keep bragging on your cooking, and you keep having pies that ain't done or are all burnt up. Well, actually, uh, we got to be getting back to town. Uh, hey, little Joe, now, here's, uh, here's your money. Uh, give it a horse. Yeah. Of course. Now, you tell your pa what I said about getting mixed up with racehorses, you hear? Yes, sir. I think he ought to think twice on it. Yes, sir. Thank you for calling Enos. Ooh. 
Feed him, and I'll bed him down. Then we'll both go in and talk to Paul. Come up. You know you're you're beginning to act just like another brother of mine. Oh hell, I mean, ain't that? That brain's just a. Well, I sure do hate to face Paul alone. That's all. Why? Oh, hello. What's wrong? Nothing. Well. bought a horse. <laughs> you, uh, you bought a horse? Yeah, Paul. And he's... He's taller than anything we have here on the ranch. Oh, he sure is. Yeah, he sure is. You intend to, uh, cut cattle or, uh, or do some roping with this, uh, this giraffe? No, 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 no. This is a racehorse. We, uh, bought him straight from Kentucky. It's a racehorse, straight from Kentucky. How many times have I told you two that if an animal doesn't carry its own weight here, we don't need it? No, no, you don't understand. See, we're going to enter him in the race in Virginia City, and when we win the $1,500, then we're going to sell him. But, Paul, he can sure run. Of course, he can sure eat. A regular hay burner, ain't it? Paul, Adam took him out for a... A little run this afternoon, and ain't a horse on this whole place that can even make him breathe hard. Oh, that's for sure. Then run? Yeah, look at his chest. Yeah, take a look at these legs, too, Paul. Right here. It's deep. Look at those legs, Paul. You ever seen anything like it? Ain't he something? How's the steam power? Oh, he can run all day. Pay for him. Uh, we, well, we, uh... What did we pay? Uh... Paul, would you say $400 was too much money to pay for an animal like that? $400? Cash money. You have a bill of sale? Oh, yeah, sure. Right here. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Something wrong? You stole the horse. What? Yeah. This horse is worth a thousand dollars. Didn't I tell you? Huh? <laughs> Didn't I tell you he's worth every single matter of fact, uh -huh. he's worth fifteen hundred dollars to anyone who wants a racehorse. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Paul? Well, I guess the only way you can earn his board and keep is by entering him in that Virginia City race. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's what we're going to do, Paul. <clears throat> you are? The only, uh, the only thing is we're going to have to borrow $25 for the entrance fee. $25? How'd you boys get that broke? Uh, well, that's, that's a long, sad story. Now, the point is, Pa, uh, Can you loan us 25? Yeah, and maybe another 100 or so, so we can make a few side bets. How much? 75? 50? 25 for the fee, huh? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll lend you 25 for the fee and $50 a piece for the side bets. Hey. <laughs> Great. Buddy. Of course. 
If I'm going to lend you that kind of money, I'm afraid I'm simply going to have to... Ah, we know, Paul. Security. Security. Yeah. Mmm. These are... These are really good cookies, ma'am. Well, thank you. Well, I've been meaning to tell you a little, Joe. You've been doing a fine job. Near as good as me in my younger days. Mm, thank you. But for $15... And... Enos, I don't start that again. Uh, well, of course, it, it, it's getting late now. You should get ready for bed. Yeah, I think you're right. Ah. Night, little Joe. Good night, man. Pleasant dreams. Enos? Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> we gotta put the stock to bed, so you go to bed. Uh, good night, dear. Why don't you shave once in a while? I will, honey. Good night. Oh, I'll, I'll be up later. Now, uh... Now we better get that stock checked. Oh, oh no, no, no. Just, just a minute, uh... I want to ask you something. Uh, that little black horse you were breaking, uh, he as fast as he looks. Mm-hmm. It's about the fastest little animal I ever rode. Uh, how long do you think it would take to get him uh, set for racing? Racing? <laughs> You're not figuring on racing that horse, are you? Well, it, it might be if uh, you thought we could get him ready by time. You know, that $1,500 purse is mighty inviting. You figuring on riding them? Well, I couldn't, but I thought maybe you'd like to. Uh, before, naturally, I'd make it worth your while. You win, I'll give you $400. Oh, I don't know, though. No. You know, my brother's having that horse in the race. It just... Nah, it just, just doesn't seem right for me to ride against him. No, 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 little Joe. You you just just don't understand. Now, you can't lose. Boy, what a race. Nobody can lose it. Don't you remember? You told me if the thoroughbred wins, you get 500 of the purse, plus the third interest of the horse. That's right. But if Blackie wins, you get $400, and the brothers have to give you the thoroughbred and the rifle. <laughs> hey, you know, Mr. Milford, I, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, well, you you were just looking at one side of it. Yeah, well, I guess I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got something I want to show you. you're about to see may be our ace in the hole. An English riding saddle. Yeah, was that all of it? Yeah, I've had this one for a long time. All I had left after that racehorse of mine fell down and broke his leg. Feel his weight. Yeah. Hey. Hey, that thing doesn't hardly weigh anything at all, does it? Yeah, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if a horse could run a mite faster with this on his back instead of one of ours. I bet you're right. I bet you are right. Yeah. I just wonder if the racing committee lets you use it. Oh, I've already checked the rules. It says all horses will be ridden with a saddle. Now, uh, just because this one looks more like a napkin with stirrups on it, <laughs> nobody can say it ain't a proper saddle. It's a saddle, all right. Yeah. Boy, you really checked this thing out, huh? I sure did. There's just one thing. What? Well, I, I, I think that, that for training and, and riding this horse, it's just, well, it's just worth more than $400. Just to be fair, I should get $500. $500, you got yourself a rider. Four fifty. Five hundred. Five hundred. You know, little Joe, I'm beginning to think the only way to get ahead of you is walk behind you. Now, just one more little favor. Let's keep this kind of a secret from uh, Cora, I mean, you know. You know how she feels about racing. Don't you worry about it. So, Mr. Milford, there's one thing you and I understand. It's women. Mm. Enid! Yes, dear? Hey, hey, the saddle. Uh, oh, the saddle.
Sure can run. Gonna take a mighty good horse to beat him. I hope you're right. We'll find out day after tomorrow. <laughs> I've got a feeling your brother's gonna do some yelling about this saddle. I've got a feeling they're gonna do some yelling about who's sitting in that saddle. Hey, little brother. Glad to see you here. Came to see your horse win, huh? You can start counting your money right now. Hello, Mr. Milford. What you got here? A horse. A race horse. <laughs> a race horse. <laughs> You, you ain't planning on running this little puny thing against that big, long-legged thoroughbred of ours, are you? Who's gonna ride him? Well, I was meaning to talk to you about that, Adam, but I've been so busy all week, I... What you're trying not to tell me is that you were going to ride him, right? Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute, Joe. You mean you're gonna ride this horse against our race horse? You got a third interest in him yourself. We know that, but that ain't enough. Wait a minute. Come again on that a little bit slower, Mr. Milford. Look, if he wins from me, he gets 500 for riding, plus all your losing horse, plus your rifle at him. But if he loses and you win, he gets 500 from the prize and only a third of your horse. <laughs> It seems to me that our little brother has learned some very interesting ways since he left the home hearth. Yes, sir. He's put together some real dandy little tricks, ain't he? Yeah, well, you, you, you fellas told me I should get better habits about saving money. Don't you think you're overdoing it, little brother? Well, I wouldn't worry too much. Looks like a pretty small horse. You think he can last the race in a dead run? Just... We'd like you to clean and polish that rifle of yours before you give it to me. Race isn't run yet. Come on, Adam. We gotta get saddled up anyhow. Well, B. What kind of a saddle is little Joe said? It looks like one of those English kind, huh? Too sure English saddles acceptable in this race. Now, Clan, if Venus is using one on his horse, you can believe it. He's read the rules pretty close. No, Ben. It's a bit grand, wouldn't you say? Venus, there's some question about that saddle there. Well, now, Clem, according to the rules, it says. All mounts will be ridden with a saddle. Now, I reckon out here that this little piece of leather wouldn't be considered much of one. But it's made of leather, got a seat, stirrups, and tied on with a cinch. Now, if that don't make a saddle, I don't know what does. Well, Clem, he's right, you know. If you want to change the rules, you're going to have to wait till next year. Right now, he's got it. <laughs> Let's get on with the race. Some of you have forgotten, here they are. All you riders know the big elm tree about a half mile out of town. Well, you all circle it, tree on your right, and back here to the finish. You know, read them good now, read them, do you? Yeah, come on. Now, don't get too excited, Enos. Remember what happened last time? Now, Sam, you promised not to tell it. He didn't. I saw you sneak off this morning. I just made Sam drive me in. Uh, Enos, they're going to start. At least you can put that poor horse back to work after he loses. Woman, why don't you go burn her pie? On your marks. Get set. Go.
your soul. Oh. Indians. Joe Wood. I gotta tell you, Ben. <laughs> well, you did it. I don't know how. Such a small horse, but you did it. Well, I think the weight of that saddle might have made a little difference. Mustn't uh, hurts. I gotta admit, it's the prettiest race I've ever seen run, Joe. Uh, Thank you. Well, this thoroughbred just isn't as thorough as I thought he was. Too bad, Adam, but it was a good race. Little Joe, you really slickered them with that little saddle of yours. <laughs> I'll pay you all off. I'll pay you all off much as I hate all you. All right. <laughs> Congratulations to little Joe. Come on, let's give our horse a rub down. Come on. All right, partner. Yeah. You take him. Huh? Come on. And, uh... Now I'll take my other horse. Don't remind me. I don't think I like this much. What's the matter? Oh, you too? Here. Enos Milford. Now, Cora. Have you lost your senses? Cora, let me explain. But what do you want him for? He ain't good for anything on the ranch. Oh, just look at him, Cora. Just look at him. As pretty an animal as God ever created. And I just couldn't resist trading Blackie for him. But at least Blackie was good for something besides fool horse racing. Mother, this big horse means a lot to me. Oh, sure, I know he's useless, but uh, I've always wanted a thoroughbred. And even if all he can do is eat and winnie, it's, uh, well, uh, sort of something I've wanted ever since I was a boy. Enos, <laughs> sometimes I'll just never understand men. <laughs> oh, let's take this big hay burner and get home. Thanks right. for the horse. Yeah, Enos got himself a mighty fine animal. Well, Mr. Milford wanted that thoroughbred so bad, Pa, I couldn't very well refuse him. Besides, old, old Blackie here is nothing but working stock. That's a beauty. I, I got a scabbard. Looks like little Joe won all the marbles. Cinch race. You fellas and that animal sure cost me a lot of money. Here you are, horse. Here's what you won. How about a beer, Leaf? I'll, I'll buy you a beer. Come on. Just a minute. What is going on here? <clears throat> Adam, you see, I... Well, I put up my new saddle for security to borrow the money to make that bet with. But we lost. I know you did, Adam, and I'm sorry about that. Now, let me get this straight. You are telling me that you bet against our horse? Adam, old Leif was making such good odds, I just couldn't resist. Tell you what I'll do, Adam. Why don't you take this money and buy your rifle back? I, I won't. No security. How about, uh, how come I don't go down and buy you a beer? Well, I'll buy you a beer, too. You just leave. I'll buy everybody a beer. You want a beer? You want your rifle back? You want your rifle back? How much do you want to bet on this one? What you got for security? <laughs> 